Hi Darshan. Welcome to Sudhi Podcast channel. Thank you. Thank you Adi. Share with the viewers about how you grew as a musician in a musician's household. Uh, things that influenced you during your upbringing, struggles that you also had to face. Yeah. I started off at the age of 2 and uh, luckily like my uh, father has an academy in Juhu as you said we were a part of it. and uh, so music was always there in the house and every like he has four days classes in a week so and it was in the house itself so every day i get up or you know i sleep every there's something some music is going on continuously in the house and he also had his own band and he used to perform outside for for the hindi orchestra thing so uh, somehow it's it was just there in in the house and It, it just one day it just happened that I was just playing uh, on uh, on the table, like just just randomly playing with the radio. No, I mean he, at the age of two. At the age of two. Wow. So he just saw me playing like you know just some banging against the uh, the table and uh, and he I don't know he just saw that there's some kind of a rhythm in this guy and you know he can see he can listen to the beat and uh, you know play. So from there it all started off, and uh, obviously he gave me the basic trainings of drums, and uh, but uh, his was more on the, the the Hindi orchestra kind of drumming that uh, he was into, uh, because during that time they were not as uh, out to the the Western part of uh, drumming, because they didn't have obviously the YouTube's and the the DVDs and everything. So uh, I started off with that school of music, and. Uh, later on obviously he thought that uh, you know uh, he should introduce me to the the actual drumming uh, you know the way it happens in the west so uh, i started learning from uh, this, this amazing drummer called lester goodino so uh, he actually saw him at a concert somewhere and he said that, you know it would be great if you can come down and you know uh, teach my kid and you know it will it'll be really nice but he was also too busy that time so bombay he, yeah he was uh, but he used to travel a lot like he used to go to abu dhabi for something for like 2 3 months and he was based in goa a little bit so he didn't have that much time to you know to teach so 2 3 months he he came and he you know i i he gave me some basic rudiments and the notation books that he had so i started doing some western notations with him and uh, later on then he introduced me to a, another tutor called pankaj sharma Uh, who's again a, a an amazing percussionist come drama uh, and like i almost learned with him for almost 8 years and he really changed the way i obviously looked at the whole kit the basic rudiments about you know how the independence of uh, the hand and leg exercises and you know just even this even how to play a snare drum like how how you actually uh, play that the the tight stroke and um, he also introduced me to a lot of dvds uh, the vhs as which were there during that time so he introduced me to to terry bozio to steve smith and uh, uh, a lot of different uh, stuff so that was uh, the the mainly the uh, main training during during uh, my childhood days and uh, at the age of 8 i i joined little wonders which was uh, a a troupe by Kalyan. which was set up by by kalyan ji anand ji the music directors and uh, so actually one day uh, my dad had met them somewhere at a recording and uh, so then they said that uh, uh, do you have any kids who play musical instruments because you have an institute so maybe you might have some kids who are you know a little more uh, professional and you know, in you know who can do a, like a proper concert so he said yeah i'm like my my uh, kid he uh, my son he plays drums and uh, why don't you have a listen so we went to his house one day Uh, with my small kit uh, like that the calcutta made kit <laughs> uh, and uh, so he uh, he had listened he was really sweet and he said uh, there's a concert on uh, upcoming sunday why don't you uh, send him to nehru center and let him try a 5 minute solo act in, in the concert so then i was like really excited because you know like that was i used to play with my dad all, uh, during the earlier days but this was like a proper concert which i where i was featured in a in a in a very uh, you know in a more individual way and the i had given a 5 minute slot to me to play a, a drum solo 
So from there on it all started and I think I worked with them for almost 7 to 8 years. Worked in the sense? Uh, like I, I played, uh, I toured with them all around India, as abroad, a as a kid, yeah. What about school? Uh, luckily that was during weekends, so Monday to Friday I used to go to school, Friday evening I used to take the train because that time we, we, we used to not travel by flights because it was like a, a 30 member troop. So uh, we used to take Friday evening the, the train reach there Saturday, do a concert on Saturday, maybe close by do another concert on Sunday, take the train in the night, come back and straight go to school. <laughs> so yeah, it was fun and I did I think around 400 concerts in that span of six to seven years. And, and you managed to get good marks or? Yeah, I was an average student, not uh, a really like any high scores or something, but an uh, average student decent enough to just pass on <laughs> to, to the next grade. <laughs> But uh, because the even my dad and mom, they, they never used to force me in studies that way because they knew the focus was always music and I always wanted to go. Uh, you know, but tell me something, why just drums? Why not keyboard? Why not guitar? Uh, first of all, I, uh, for my dad is a drummer, so I used to always see him playing uh, drums on stage, you know, whether it was uh, any in his orchestra shows or the Dandia shows, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was very inspiring to see, and he has he had a whole look of you know putting the the clairs and this, and so it was like wow, like you know, and he had those lights, and so it was quite uh, cool to see a drama, you know, because otherwise other instruments are there, but you you when you see a drama, it's like the and the whole instrument is so amazing, it's got so much dynamics in it, and so somehow it inspired me a lot. But I also learned tabla for uh, nine years, so. Uh, and I was really thankful to my dad to, uh, to, to, you know, to make me learn tabla because now I realize that how important tabla is as an instrument for an Indian percussionist or an Indian drummer or you know, somebody who plays in this whole Bollywood thing. Because somehow if you have the basics of tabla then playing with a, any kind of a fusion setup or a, a, a band which is more into the Carnatic music or the Indian classical stuff it's very easy to relate and it's very easy to play with a tabla player because you you know the whole uh, essentials about the the basics of it so it really helped me a lot and uh, i i would also really like to suggest to whatever drummers the young drummers to just learn tabla not for the to not play as a as a pro but just for the knowledge of uh, the whole uh, because the the mathematics is amazing so uh, it's very important Correct. So you are talking about you doing a lot of concerts with Kalyan Jananji yeah. and Stroop and then what happened later in terms of career and uh, After that, uh, uh, after I finished school I also left uh, the, the troop and I, I thought that I should now move on and do something else and you know. So uh, at the age of 16 when I, I was just about to enter college, uh, we went for a concert of uh, Ustad Zakir Hussain in Juhu. And it was basically a percussion ensemble which had uh, uh, Ranjit Barot and Tofi Qureshi and Vikubin um, Akram and a lot of percussionists. So my dad took me there. And uh, after the show, uh, we got an opportunity to meet uh, uh, Sir Ranjit Barot. So, uh, and then uh, he, dad spoke to him and he said, you know, my, my kid, he's, uh, he's doing some stuff with Kalyanji Aranji and you know, now he wants to move and he wants to. Uh, if you can you know, teach him some stuff and, and how to go forward with him. So uh, he said, why not? And you know, like uh, he, he said, yeah, I've heard about him from somewhere or the other, but uh, it'll be, yeah, I'll send it to the studio and you know, I'll see how we can go forward on this. So I'll just ask you to take a break here. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of these musicians, rather students of music from outside Bombay. Hmm. Now, thankfully you had a very encouraging father also a musician himself True. and had some kind of connections in the industry. In the industry yeah. There are a lot of these musician kids outside who now are using YouTube to learn or Correct. maybe some local teacher there who can teach whatever Correct. their limits and exposure is. True. Uh, when somebody approaches such established names like say Ranjit Baro, now Gino Banks or now even you, how do you kind of decide ke okay, he's a good player, so let me help him or I can teach him. Yeah, see, if, you, if obviously if they have the time to call you the, the, to the studio and if you can just play them something. No more, are, are you guys approachable? Absolutely, we are, you know, like if, uh, I, I think Gino, uh, he has his own school uh, as well and he does a lot of stuff 
Ranjit bhai obviously uh, he's uh, he's not more into teaching but uh, uh, because he's doing a lot of things you know and it's very difficult for him as a you know teacher to give that much amount of time to students but he's always helpful for somebody who's done his basics right and then wants to step to the next level and he has a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, like how you can go forward with this what music to listen to you know mm-hmm. which drummers to follow you know and every time i go to the studios he's like okay did you check out this drummer you know there's this new drummer in europe who's come out okay check just check out the youtube links i'll send it to you the and first when i used to go he, he just brought me so much music because uh, i i've understood that one thing that listening to music is very important as a as a musician because the more you listen the more you you know you evolve and the more mature you get as a musician as well so uh, and also listening to the right guys is very important you know so uh, he introduced me to billy cobham to tony williams he used to burn me cds of you know i used to just sit with his folder he had some four five folders of cds so uh, i used to just go to the studio okay now today this album today this album and uh, i also didn't want to just grab everything just wanted to, to to go step by step and see every album how, how it is and you know then break it down and okay this guys use this this lick here and then he start to taught me okay this is what billy cobham used to uh, you know this is his main rudiment and so that's what it's so uh, obviously i i think they are all approachable it's about if you have the dedication and if you can you know and they are also performing everywhere in the city today so if you can go to their concerts i i i can say that i have learned a lot of things from ranjit bhai just by looking at him and just by just going for his performances and you know the 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 teaching process was that he didn't have that much time to always you know to teach me a rudiment to go to the drums and everything but whatever i could grab uh, uh, you know just watching him was uh, i think was amazing right so yes so once you started learning with him then how did you kind of proceed ahead uh, later on obviously my little bit of uh, bollywood thing was going on and then i started playing with uh, uh, kunal ganja wala and a couple of uh, singers to start off with and uh, and then i uh, for one uh, concert i was doing at uh, at the chitrakoot grounds through uh, one of my dear friend shirin chugeshwala she had uh, put up some stuff for a for a concert and he want, she wanted me to put up, put up a basic band for a couple of singers and uh, lucky be shankar ehsan loy were uh, were the judges there for this uh, because it was a competition for the singers and i was backing like there was a backing band which i had put down so uh, luckily they were in the audiences and uh, i had somehow uh, done some tweaks on the the bollywood song and done some arrangements with me and chandresh could go on guitars so we had done some stuff and uh, uh, after that whole thing uh, they were going to perform shankar asana had had their own band to perform it so before like after we finished and before they were going on stage i met them at the the stairs just going down and i met shankar bhai and he's like uh, like i just met him and he said Uh, i think we need to work together and he said uh, there's my manager just talk to him and this i want to see you at the studio tomorrow so it just happened so quickly like even i had no idea like you know i met him and then he said i want to uh, set up a, a a band with you know the young kids and i want to do some uh, structural changes to my songs and um, and then from there on it it all happened and it's been like around 7 to 8 years i've been performing with them all over the world the first film i played uh, with them was johnny gadda that was the title song that was my first song for shankar asana and uh, after that they were working on this movie with farhan and they wanted to record as a band like they didn't wanted to make to come separately and the bass player to come separately and asan to do the bass parts they said why don't we come together for say around 15 days and try to uh, you know jam and uh, uh, then accordingly make the score so it was really a fun process and uh, for me to to because that till that time i was playing one song in an album or two songs in an album but this was something which was i was a part of the whole the whole album and uh, it was great fun so much things to first of all learn from the amazing shankar madhav he like just inspires you every time you meet him and he's such a positive guy and I've really had a great time working with him, and and even as I'm not, they are really one of the finest music directors ever. That happened in '97. Uh, my dad had uh, he's obviously he uh, he's an uh, he's a painter, he's an artist as well. Before music, he used to do that, and he has a habit of just keeping everything like whatever small article comes into a, a paper of mine or whatever little thing, uh, whether it's a a picture on a on a ticket 
or or whatever anywhere in the in a in a magazine. He likes to just collect everything and keep it. Also, he has a lot of videos of me from the age of two to to eight and you know ten. So then one of his friends suggested, why don't you uh, put this to to Limka Books and see because you know he's been doing so much stuff and he's almost done five hundred concerts already at the age of eleven. Then uh, why don't you give it to Limka Books? So he just collected everything and he he just sent a mail to Delhi. And uh, I think within two months they 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 came back and said that we declare as the he's wow. the youngest drummer of India, and uh, it was quite a cool thing then because you know you know then people started there was a lot of articles started coming and people recognize you in school and like you know through that and it was a fun thing and thanks to that actually it happened. Uh, let's come back to what you do today. You play f- for film songs, you do concerts, yeah. you know live shows and stuff like that. Not just with Chandra Sen Loy, but now with Salim Suleiman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Many other music composers. Yeah. There have been times where you play a different set every day in a week. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This means different music, different people to work with, yeah. different kits, different bands, different locations, maybe different locations, different cities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you kind of manage to balance this? Uh, somehow, I have. Uh, a little bit of memory which i can uh, and i'm not into writing and the reading and playing stuff I, i like to just memorize it completely so that when i'm playing i my focus is just on playing and not on like looking at uh, a particular thing and then playing you know? so uh, i had this habit of memorizing songs and you know just parts and everything so when i play with these these artists it's obviously uh, uh, it's quite challenging because you know one day i'm playing like a full on proper rock concert with shankar asanloy with like some 8000 10000 people and the next day i'm playing a concert with hari haran which has to be very chilled out because you know with him is it's like his singing is 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 so like those minute things are there that you can't be like loud and you know he wants a little back up that ways so it is quite challenging uh, uh, to play each very you know different sets but it i i am really enjoying this part, thing right now because uh, i'm playing with like the finest musicians you know they and whether it's salim suleiman or shankar hasan loy amit trivedi also got an opportunity to play with rehman uh, rehman uh, yeah rehman because of ranjit bhai so uh, I I take it as a challenge and I you know I try to just memorize all the parts and whatever best I I can and you know uh, no how do you rehearse how do you rehearse with so many people Uh see with Shankar Hasan it's like I've been playing for quite some time now so we don't rehearse as much it's the more of the rehearsals happens during sound check and you know mm-hmm. and Shankar bhai is so quick like you know when uh, with, with songs you know he just he he has to just look at me and okay break down and you know start now like it's just it's a like a you know eye contact thing with him but with Salim Suleiman we do a lot of rehearsals like you know we try to uh, change arrangements we try to work out on you know to just refresh it and to to make it more uh, you know happening so that when the same audience is attending the concert he feel yeah there's something new to new. it now yeah mm-hmm. so uh, that's fun so with salim suleiman it's it's a lot of fun because they are such amazing producers and we also run a lot of tracks with it so it's 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 really great great fun to just gel with that whole ableton thing the electronic thing is happening now so uh, it's good fun so every set as i told you it's a it's a different uh, challenge uh, you know when i play with a fusion band like a bombay project which i which, which is my own setup with ashwin shrinivas and there again it's a, a different approach of drumming that i have to take it sounds as if you playing day and night and you know yeah. rehearsing and every night there's a show and all so this is a common question i've been asking all drummers do you pump iron in terms of don't your <laughs> don't your shoulders pain and Uh, pain. Again, uh, I think if you have the right technique, I think it should not happen because uh, uh, the the very important thing in in drums is uh, is basically to have the right grip and to have the right bounce because you don't have to play each yeah. note. You don't have to like actually play it. It's all about bounce. If you have the right technique, I don't think so. Your any of your limbs will will pain. and uh, when it comes to gymming i do gym uh, like i i do uh, i do work out and uh, i i just try to be fit i just try, try to be you know in 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 a little shape because as i travel so much and different food different mm. water climate everything is changing so it's just good to be in a little bit of shape okay. I'm, i'm not but <laughs> I, i'm still working on it this just occurred to me i mean uh, 
many times as an audience you want to go to the loo but you can't <laughs> we, can't. we have to go before the gig there's, there's <laughs> never happened that you've just eaten some food and mar gaya pet is we have to do whatever those things has has to be done before the gig then no, once you are on stage you have a bad stomach what do you do no <laughs> that's no? a very you never have a pillow something <laughs> that you have to you know okay. to block it like <laughs> <laughs> That's how much you can't do anything. But has it ever happened? Uh, not oh, yet. Okay. I, I touch wood. I, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, kind of things. But uh, yeah, little bit here and there. Sometimes on and off, we do get a break. Like uh, there is an in, uh, intermission and you know, okay. uh, in between concerts. So. But it is hot on stage, right? In terms yeah, of. Yeah. But it it uh, again depends. Like something like at this uh, in this month right now, mm. everywhere it's like super chilly and it's super cold. Like mm. it, you have to wear jackets and all sometimes. Okay. When when we go to Jaipur or Udaipur and right. Delhi and all this sector. But again, when we go to Chennai or something like that, it's just really hot and mm. you know we are sweating uh, asses off. So, uh, as a, that's that's why that's why it's important to 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 be in shape and to mm-hmm. to do a, a workout at least whenever you can. Obviously, we have a very busy schedule and we can't do it every day. But at least if we can make an effort to do it, I'm sure like you know everybody can try to be in shape and eat healthy. Now, I think my body is also at a point has given up. <laughs> I think he says it just do what you want. Maybe one day I'm gonna you know jack you properly. So it's like. Right now, currently, I'm I'm enjoying this whole thing, and it is taking a it, it does take a toll, like especially when I do like four or five shows back to back. I do feel tired after the fifth show, and and especially also when we uh, I like to mention when we tour like United States, we have like three back to back gigs on weekends, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, and that too the the worst part is that Friday if we are in New York, Saturday I, I might have to go to Houston, and Sunday the gig might be in LA. so it's like that's that's a little crazy that uh, the schedule that we we have to you know cope up with but luckily monday to thursday again we get a good enough break to just you know re uh, recharge ourselves and you know get back to a different city but yeah that i sometimes feel that that's a little hardcore when we travel especially the united states because there also the time changes the weather changes the you know the food things are are, are different so that is something very challenging and last year i think i did around 3 tours uh that to one month each so it was quite a hard go and but i yeah, but i i think it's the music which you know uh, allows you to do it and you know because of just you want to be on stage every day and that whole fun of being in front of a, a crowd and you know getting love so much it's it's that's what keeps keeps you going is there any specific reason that drums are kept in the center of the stage and- not on the side like a tabla can <laughs> <laughs> first of all obviously as you, as i told you it's it's a beautiful instrument and it looks great so it's it's it, you know it's a perfect spot for it but i think it's also because of uh, the coordination of you know drama is obviously a very integral part of the band you know he, that's what he's the guy who's going to keep time so uh, if he's in the center it's like you know i can just watch everybody you know i can just cue anybody who i want to and you know it's it becomes a little easier unless be me being in the corner and you know then just having a look of this this thing so somehow even sonically it i think it works out great for sound engineers to uh, to have drums in the center okay and i think also for the whole coordination and the eye contact thing it works perfect for for me as well correct uh, in case a singer comes into uh, a very happy mood because the audience is responding and suddenly he wants to uh sing that same mukra again or yeah, yeah. something again that happens quite often but how do you know that i'm supposed that to play <laughs> especially how does that communication happen i think it's more we you play together with that artist it, it, you just build a, a contact as i told you with shankar madhavan uh, there is there is very little thing as format because he is one guy which can, he, i sometimes also you know in the band we call him the auto rickshaw he just he can just go in anywhere he wants to you know there's there's no life right there's no signal he is just he might just go into maybe an an antra maybe he might suddenly. just yeah suddenly like it depends because he he feels with the crowd you know sometimes he feels that there is a limit limited time and he doesn't want to do the the first music so maybe after the mukhra he might just go into the antra Okay. you know a lot of times it happens and it's we just have to follow him and but you know and it's like do you get confused while playing no or? i think now we like no, with, no. with shankar bhai we, we are so in sync now with him it's like uh, just at a look and one of his hands you can just come to know 
Okay. Even even I would like to say uh, playing with Adnan Sami, you know, uh, he's he just you have to watch him basically. Basically, you have to watch his hand. That's he just controls the band on his hand. So it's it's quite fun to play with him also because obviously the grooves are very like very dholak and tabla oriented, and uh, he's got some odd time stuff of uh, you know of of Indian uh, dholak loops and all. So that's fun, and uh, he does a lot of gimmicks on stage with with the band as well. So it's kind of fun, but you need to be on your toes. That's the thing. You can't be like chilling like. Or you can't just be like on. Uh, okay, you know, see, seeing somebody in the crowd. That's not gonna happen with these guys. It's like you have to be very alert. Right, right. Somebody just posted a question to be asked to you: Is uh, what do you think of a bass player? And <laughs> just love bass players. I I somehow. Uh, Drums and bass just go goes back and forth, okay. and um, uh, is there a lot of communication that happens between you and the bass? Yes, I, yes, absolutely. Like you know, especially I, I right now currently I'm playing a lot with uh, this bass player called Rushad Mistri, and we have a great connect on stage, and you know we just look at each other, and you know whenever we have to push or you know I'm doing some job, he'll just look at me and he'll smile. And there's a lot of communication which happens. You know, is that important? Uh, it's very important. It's uh, not with just the bass player, just with the whole band. You know. Because people are looking at you, you know, you can't be just like a serious guy just playing. Like you know, there has to be. They also are, are you know, uh, just looking at the whole emotions. And so a lot of people ask me, you know, why, why are you smiling or why, what, what happened when you were you know doing something and you know something went wrong. So even so when something went wrong, we have we have a smile, you know, because because we know that something has gone wrong. But, but the audience cannot. The make audience it. cannot sometimes make out. If there are musicians, then obviously they're gonna catch you. But uh, sometimes a lot of people cannot make out, and there are these little little things. But uh, but it's good fun. Sur thoda niche tha types. Yeah, that to obviously is a, is a, is a, does right. happen here right. and then. Right. But uh, even when band, sometimes we we miss a hit or mm. we miss, or we miss a bit beat here and there. But you just have to smile and just you know move okay. move on and like that. Yes. Okay. For your hand and uh, uh, leg coordination, yeah. your feet coordination. Yeah. Is there a specific way of achieving that? Because it's difficult to play, uh, say, a keyboard with two hands. Correct. Similarly, for you, you're yeah, using yeah, all your limbs. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of rudiments which which goes through, you know, uh, uh, in the hand and leg coordination. And uh, I, I obviously had a, I, I went through a lot of exercises with that. And I always used to play on a metronome, practice on a metronome. That also one thing which I used to. Uh, I tell a lot of drummers, uh, the young guys who are coming up, and you know, to to play on a metronome because that is something that is going to really help you in session uh, drumming. When when you when you do a recording or something, you have to play on click. There's no there's no other way out. So to be on uh, on on that grid, you have to from day one you need to practice on a metronome. Whether it's even basic rudiments like sing, single strokes or double strokes or paradiddles and triplets and I just did all the exercises exactly what I play on with my hands with my legs as well. So I'm developing the hand and legs both at the same time. Plus, obviously, I'm practicing on a metronome, so I'm also developing my time, which is which is you know uh, powerful. And uh, uh, I, it it also helps you because I when I go to a session, I like to play a song throughout. I don't cut like I don't play till the music and then okay now for antara I'll play one more take and then again. I like to play the song from. You know, from the point one to to the end. So, and it also it also somehow works better for for the music also because then there are there are no cuts and edits that the that the sound engineer has to work on. You know, so uh, I really enjoy doing that, and that only you can only do if you are good with time. Because if you are if you can if you lose click, then he's the, the engineer is going to tell you guys let's do it again because you know you've just uh, either you know you're rushing or you're dragging or something like that. So. That's that's one thing that I really uh, would tell I would like to tell drummers is to play on a metronome and practice on a metronome. In a recording, when you go to you know for a song, do you ask whether what kind of song it is because then you have to decide on the kit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, especially again, as I told you, I'm, I'm just going for a recording now. So I always tell them that you send me a song a day in advance. Let me just hear the song, and uh, then obviously you will get a rough idea about okay, is this a, like a proper hardcore rock song or it's a pop song or maybe something like a reggae thing or or you know a more chill out like a jazz track so it is easier for us to to have the track in it in advance at least a day so that we can also listen to it and by the time i go to the studio i'm pretty much 50% of my work is 
like it's, right. it's done. So I just have to go there and then obviously with the whole kit uh, and the sound of the kit, we have to then uh, start recording. Correct. But then, uh, I mean, in days when there was no emailing and things like that, yeah. obviously you would speak on the phone and on understand. The phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then when you go there, do they tell you like in Dawla, you know that Dadra mein bajana hai. Correct. correct. So in drums also, is there a language like that? Which uh, says see, right now, uh, from the time I've started doing recordings, people have been uh, telling us to basically, they obviously have a rough loop that they have programmed already with, uh, with their programmers. But they always give us the freedom of saying, okay, this is the groove. You know, we want it to be somewhere close to it, but I, I also want you to add your things into it whether it's your fills and you know sometimes we think that okay maybe this section needs a breakdown or I, I just need need to chill there I don't need drums there you know there has to be some kind of a, oh, you a can dynamic make, you yeah. can make that decision yeah we do we, like we suggest them obviously and sometimes they are sweet enough to say okay you know oh, okay that's that sounds great you know and sometimes they have a fixed thing saying Baba let's you know let's stick to uh, this thing which is great but as a musician, I would always love to give uh, from whatever I, I, I've learnt and from whatever I've listened to yeah. that uh, this is what I think and um, and ninety percent of the time they have been sweet to 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 go forward with that and you know okay. and go ahead with that thing. In terms of miking, do you decide or you let the sound engineer decide? Frankly, when I get a session call, I the first thing I ask them is which studio are we recording because for me that is very important. Because I don't want to record in a studio which is just not for drums. You know, drums is just a, an instrument which needs a proper room, uh, which needs proper miking, and uh, and obviously an engineer who can really get the drum sound out. You know, obviously we are luckily. You know, we've been endorsed. I've been endorsed by Pearl, and you know they've given us an amazing kit, the Pearl Reference, and it sounds great, uh, whether it's live or or in sessions. But uh, it's very important to be to record it in a in a in a, in a good studio with great miking and, and a an amazing engineer. So uh, and we have some amazing studios, whether it's the Yashra Studios at Chantanus or the, uh, at Vijay. Yeah. And uh, I also love recording at Nysa with uh, Murli. I, I've done a lot of sessions there. Uh, so we have good studios, and you know, and and. I think they are one of the finest in the in the country right now, and they do a great job, you know, when it comes to drums and recording life. So, but it's important to uh, I, I see. But they obviously have a thing that okay, we don't have budget, you know, that's too expensive and all. But I always say, you know, it's better to you you can pay me a little less, but I would love to go into a studio which which will give you the output that you're looking at. Otherwise, you won't, you know, I want you to call me again. Mm. That's why, you know, because if I go to a studio which, which won't get the sound out, he's not, he, he, for the next time he'll say that, oh, that thing didn't work, you know. Mm. Mm. So I, I would rather, you know, uh, yeah. give a little sacrifice on my fees, but I would go to a oh, good studio and get the right output. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Any last piece of advice to young drummers and students of music? The main thing is practice. You have to give uh, good hours of practice especially when you're starting off and uh, be honest to your instrument uh, you know listen to good music try to learn each day every day from whoever, whoever you can it can be a, a even maybe from a kid or from a from an, from a, a proper drummer so that's it i think you have to just keep practicing and hear good music and you know do your, do your best and every day just work for it because this is an instrument which you're not going to reach that level so easily you know you have to keep working on it there are a lot of uh, small things are which are there you know and every day when you play you you feel like okay wow this is something new you know okay okay and even something like even just changing heads so like sometimes you uh, right now i'm using the evans 360 uh, uh, you know the g2s and sometimes i want to try a different head or maybe a different head for the snare you know, so then it's a very every day is a learning process. You know, you have to be at it, and you, you need to keep watching the the right people. That's it. Great. Thank you, Darshan, for sharing your story. Thanks, with us. thanks for uh, getting me on the show. And Great. I've been, uh, you know, I've been following all the uh, different episodes with uh, diff you know all these musicians that you do, and it's a it's an amazing thing that you've started off. And you know, at least through this, people can know how. You know these these the band and the musicians work and how Bollywood functions. How is it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Dash. Thanks. Sir.